Hi, in this video, we'll be covering the saved results section and just kind of generally discuss uh, the file management um, for a data miner and the data that you scrape. Because uh, obviously, as you build recipes and scrape data, uh, the data is going to be the most important thing. So we want to make sure that uh, just the whole saving of it and downloading of it makes sense. Um, so in this video, we'll kind of run through a few scenarios and I'll just point out uh, just different pieces of information as we go along and I'll uh, clarify how it all works. Uh, so that's it. Let's go ahead and jump right in. So I'll open up Data Miner, and uh, before you have done any scraping, uh, you'll see just pretty much options to run or edit different recipes. Um, starting at the at this pop-up level, um, I want to point out this first uh, button. Uh, so this kind of uh, fast-forward button allows you to do a quick scrape uh, just from this pop-up, and as you click this, it will actually append the data, um, and you can see the data based on uh, this new text where it says four rows. Uh, this represents how many rows have been scraped. Um, and if you click the button again, uh, it will accumulate and uh, append all the data. Um, you can obviously delete this data as well by clicking this X. So if you were to click that, it would give you then the pop-up saying, are you sure you want to delete this? Uh, and we can say yes, and now that data is gone. Um, so you would, again, click this kind of fast forward button to capture these four rows, and let's pretend we go back to page one. Um, this data looks good, so you then open up Data Miner again, and you can click the fast forward, and it captures it. Uh, to view the data, you can click on the, the text here, and that'll open up our main page and take you straight to the data. Um, so the way it's saved is based off of the recipe name and then a unique ID. So you can always come back here and see the data. Another thing is uh, when you're still looking at the pop-up, uh, you will have an option to do just like a single play button. Um, this will open up Data Miner and give you a preview of the recipe without actually scraping the data. So if we were to, let's say we switch to the URLs recipe here. So I'll do a single play button to open Data Miner. And that will, uh, it will show you the recipe with a preview of the output. Um, from this page, you have a few different options when it comes to scraping. Um, you can either do a new scrape and every time you click the Scrape button with this option selected, it will uh, always scrape the data and replace the previous data. So it's going to only ever give you uh, the most recent scrape. It's not going to give you any historical data. Where if you were to do Scrape and Append, um, every time you clicked uh, Scrape with this option, uh, it will gradually accumulate all the data. Um, so if we were to actually do a new Scrape, and then I click the word Scrape or the button, uh, we have now captured the data off of this one page. And every time you do a scrape, it will actually be saved again to the saved results. So if we go here and go to the drop down, you'll see we now have those two different scrapes that I've done. Um, we did the sandbox search with the eight rows. I did that from the pop up. And now this new one, the sandbox URLs with the four rows, which is the one I just did. Um, so if we go back to the page scrape section, you'll you'll actually now see we have a little message saying that this recipe has done a scrape in the past. Um, you have some historical data. So just be aware, if we were to click the scrape button again, this data would be then uh, replaced with the newest scrape. You can even click the saved uh, button just so you can see the data. Maybe you can review it if you're like, oh, this is old information, I don't need this. So you can always click scrape and replace it. Um, or the next option, you can click scrape and append, and this will then uh, allow you to accumulate data to it. So like, let's say we go to the page two and go back to data miner, say scrape, and now we have eight rows where we've added this most recent uh, collection of people to this new list uh, here. So another thing to be aware of is uh, once you've scraped the data, you can then actually save it um, in a more custom way without relying just on the recipe name and that unique ID. Um, and it will actually save it in a snapshot kind of method. So if I go to the download tab, and here where it says uh, copy data to another file inside data miner, uh, what this means is it'll take this data, it will uh, have a unique name once you type it, and it will save it and just kind of permanently leave it at that state. So let's just call this uh, first scrape. So if I do save as, this data is now available under my saved results. You'll see here, so we have my two recipe scrapes and then the duplicate, kind of the custom saved file here with the eight rows. Um, 
So what this means is this will always be here available um, for you to either download or use within a crawl. Uh, but now if I go back to page scrape and let's pretend I, uh, actually let's pretend we're coming to a new day and I'm, uh, I have some new data. So I open up data miner and let's say we want to capture these URLs again. So those eight rows are still there from before. Um, so let's, let's open up the recipe in the main data miner viewer. And again, it gives you the message, the message saying that you have some historical data. Um, it's eight rows. And you pretty much have the option to do a new scrape. Um, you can append to it, or you can also do the next page automation, which is similar to the scrape and append. Uh, we have a video that covers next page automation. Uh, we're not going to worry about that here because it, um, in terms of saved results, it works very similar to scrape and append. Um, but essentially, what we would do here is let's say we want to do a completely new scrape. Um, and we don't care about the previous historical data. So I can do just the scrape button. And now we're back to four rows, um, which is good. So this is our most recent data. And we can actually go to our saved results uh, section again, go to the drop down, And at this point, you'll see we have our sandbox URLs recipe. It now has the four rows from our most recent scrape. But we also have the saved data from our first scrape, which is the eight rows. So you can pretty much, um, as you use data miner, you can save files as you go to kind of create uh, just different um, points of time where the data has been scraped. So you can always have it available. Um, you pretty much, what this means is you can always have the option to constantly updating data, fi uh, data files, um, but you also have the option to save them to have like a snapshot of that data at that point in time. Um, Trying to think if there's anything else. Uh, obviously, you can delete all the files, and you can delete the individual files. Um, you can upload files as well. Um, so data miner will only accept CSV files and text files. Uh, it's very simple. You just click the upload file, choose the CSV from your computer, and then it's available to use within a crawl. Um, at this point, I think that pretty much covers everything. Um, I guess at this point, um, it the the download process is also um, very important as well. Um, so if you don't even want to worry about saved results um, after every scrape, you can always download your data. And then at that point, it will be saved to your computer. And you can determine the best kind of file management um, from there. Um, well, that is pretty much it. So if you have any questions, uh, definitely send us an email. And I guess thanks for watching.